welcome to Faith and Friends. This is the week for National Wildflower Week, so we certainly hope you are enjoying all of your wildflowers. Now, do you go out and plant wildflowers during National Wildflower Week, or wouldn't that kind of defeat the purpose of celebrating wildflowers you by planting You can actually them? purchase wildflower seeds to plant, which I've always thought about. Then those aren't really wild. Those are tamed flowers <laughs> or something. Domesticated. Well, They're pets. Domesticated wildflower pets. Well, if you're into wildflowers, maybe you're into hugs. It's National Hug Holiday Week, and it's National Raisin Week. Just put your grapes out in the sunshine. And so for those of us that aren't big in the hugging strangers, we, we need to hide. You what need you to saying? hide. <laughs> yeah, hide this week, Andy. <laughs> because now that we've announced it's National Hug Holiday Week. Everybody's going to be hugging. Does that mean you take a holiday from hugging? Take a holiday from hugging? Oh, I could, I could yeah. get on board with that. Oh, so okay. you're supposed to be hugging all other... This is your break week. So it's Hug Amnesty Week. Can you hug the wildflowers? Sure. Now that is a holiday. But if you hug the raisins, you might get some juice on you. Let's just move on. <laughs> Actually, before we move on, I want to read a letter that we got from a viewer. You're going to read that? A viewer. I'm only going to read a little bit of it. Okay. Because we are so thankful. We love it when you guys say things about what you like, what you don't like, and the fact that you like some of the things we're doing is always great. She writes, I think you, that would mean the three of us. So yins, if you're in Pittsburgh. <laughs> we're not in Pittsburgh. Y'all, if you're in Tennessee. But we're just in Ohio. You. So it's you. I think you three, she put a three, are just like old friends and the best yet. So much love shows when you are all together. And we aren't even hugging, and all that love shows through. But then she goes on to say, Andy is just like an old shoe, so easy to love. Andy? Thank you. Thank you. Just like an old shoe. You wearing old shoes today? These are kind of new, but I love them. <laughs> They're comfortable. She also comments, she thinks Mark looks great since he lost so much weight, and you know? That's a good thing. So we want to thank you very much for those comments. They made our day. They're very nice. And now we enjoy telling Andy he's an old shoe all the time. <laughs> Veronica Wendy, Wendy reassured me that it's good to be an old shoe uh, because you never throw away good. old shoes. I agree. That's good. Yeah. So thank you. Here at TV44, <laughs> we continue to celebrate as our Spring to Life funding campaign is nearing closer to 100% of our goal. We'll have an update on that pretty soon. We're in the final days of that, plus a lot more to come on today's show. First, a scheduling note. If you watch TV44 on a regular basis, then you likely already know that Andy Griffith's show is back on our air. Due to our contract with the company providing us with that show, we did have to move around some of our other shows. That includes Faith and Friends on Tuesday nights. You'll now find us at 9.30. Other scheduled changes include John Hagee is now on at 3.30 in the afternoon, Hazel at 5.30, Joyce Meyer nightly at 9 p.m. Visit WTLW.com for the complete schedule, and you're certainly welcome to call us with any questions or comments. The Andy Griffith Show will be seen Monday, 7 p.m. through 8.30, and then Tuesdays through Fridays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Now on with today's Faith and Friends. The month of May be brings our next Faith Challenge topic, Hearing the Voice of God. Now, depending on your church or your upbringing, you may give varying answers on how to hear the voice of God. But there are two ways that likely all agree upon, through the Bible and through prayer. Our scripture for today gives us some simple but important steps on where to place our trust and to whom we should acknowledge in order to get proper guidance. We look at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Trust in the Lord. Isn't that where it all begins? Trust and obey the old hymn, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. And so we encourage you to put your full faith and your full trust in God and his plan for your life. And he will lead you on that path. Well, it was a grand celebration had by all at the recent 103rd birthday party for Jay Sane. This lively Primrose retirement community resident is full of spirit and was grateful for the birthday company. When asked her secret to long life, her answer was simple. Just keep going, do what you do. Keep your nose clean. Uh, she just has a zest for life. She's always upbeat. She's always full of life. She loves people, always has. 
Uh, she came down here from a little town in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, the entire population of the township was probably between two and three hundred people. So she moved down here amongst all of these people, fell in love with Lima, and has been doing it ever since. It just loves people in general. In fact, until about a year and a half ago, she was going to St. Charles School two or three times a week to work in the cafeteria. The Primrose staff says Jay truly incorporates the retirement community's motto of this is living. She has great zeal for life and is active as ever. In fact, when Primrose recently decided to have a bake sale, it was a 103-year-old Sane who volunteered to run it. Happy birthday, Jay Sane, 103, 103 years old, but certainly doesn't look or act it. Oh, I thought she was about 70 when I saw her. She is sprightly. She's got energy and she's something for us to strive for. No we're, question about it. We're 103. Just get up every day and do something. <laughs> That's what we strive to do. So it hasn't been 103 years for Bell Fountain based radio station Shine FM, but anniversary number five, something to celebrate. The Christian radio station has outgrown its original broadcasting home and is now looking to double its coverage range. Jennifer has more from the fifth anniversary Shine FM event. If you put together a five year scrapbook of your life, what would it contain? Would it show concern for others? And would it be evident that you want the plans in your life to be a reflection of Jesus? Here's a scrapbook for Shine FM. Five years of Christian radio, headquartered in Bell Fountain, broadcasting into four counties and portions of 10 others, dozens of concerts, and hundreds of supporters ready to stand behind this Christian ministry through the next half decade and beyond. That's right, a half decade has passed. May 10th, 2017, the official five-year sign-on anniversary for Shine FM, 88.9 and 88.5. Since the beginning of Shine FM, we've encouraged our listeners to take five, tell five, and give five. Take five minutes a day with God, tell five people about the station, and give five dollars, at least five dollars a month in support. As a result, we've been pushing back the dark in West Central Ohio, for five years. We are so grateful for our Shine FM listeners. By supporting Shine FM, we have accomplished so much for God's kingdom. Yes, Shine FM has accomplished much for God's kingdom, but they are just getting started. The fifth anniversary celebration event at the Bell Fountain High School was an event that brought glory to God and brought the community together. More than a Christian radio station, Shine FM strives to be a source for community connections, all with the central theme of glorifying the name of Jesus. We've been able to do a lot of events, and I think we've seen the body of Christ come together, and we're so thankful for that, that we've been able to be the tool to help that happen, not only here in Logan County, but also Hardin County and Union County and Champaign County as well. And soon, if it's God's will, more counties. One of the big announcements at this year's anniversary celebration is the plan to expand Shine FM's coverage. A funding campaign is underway to raise $70,000. That's the amount of money needed to cover equipment, labor, and fees, which would double the radio station's broadcast reach. Shine FM has grown in many ways the past five years, but their mission has remained the same. A unique thing about Shine FM is the fact that, yes, it has grown and we have more listeners over time and we continue to share, you know, different songs, but really it's been fairly consistent over the long run. Right from the very beginning, we knew the mission that God had given us and we decided to go with it. And wherever he leads, we follow. So where is he leading now? In addition to the radio airwaves, Shine FM desires to share Christ with the community through concerts. The anniversary event featured I Am They and We Are Messengers. This summer, Shine FM is excited to be involved with events featuring Christian artist David Dunn, Big Daddy Weave, Danny Gokey, Jordan Felice, and many more. They're partnering with community organizations to be present at summer outdoor festivals. And they're trusting God for what's next, because they know there is a next. It's been evident the past five years, Shine FM has an eternal purpose right here on earth. And you can turn on your radio anytime during the day and hear God's word. And that is amazing to people. It's amazing to people who are new in their faith because they're trying to find the truth. They're trying to distinguish what's real and what's not, what's true and what's not. And even for a mature Christian, they need to hear that truth every single day. And Shine FM does that. We're about to bring you part five in Jennifer's series, Fully Alive with Donna Kresh. But before we do so, 
We first want to take you to a recent event where Donna presented her fully alive concept to a small group of invited guests. Among those guests was national Christian recording artist Becca Shea. Becca has this to say about Donna's belief that we're all intended to live lives fully alive, not just in our health and daily decisions, but also fully alive with our lives in Christ. Well, in order to really know yourself, you have to first know, you have to know Him. So knowing Him allows you the freedom and the healing and the joy and the peace and the abundance. I say, you know, I see with my heart. I have different set of eyes. These are one set, but I have a better set. A set that sees eternity, a set that sees the end, a set that sees the joy that's set before me. And it's not in this life only. So that's, that to me is, is when you really truly discover the fullness of life is when you understand that this is not it. And now here's Jennifer with Donna Crush as they take one final look at the realistic possibilities of living fully alive. I want you to take some time and ponder two important words. Fully alive. Fully, completely, hugely, everything and alive. We all want to not just live alive, we want to live fully alive. For the past several weeks we've had Donna Crutch joining us here on our show to talk about so many different aspects that were going on in her life, were going on in some of her friends' lives, maybe going on in your life as well, and taking a deeper look to be able to really examine what are those symptoms, what are the cures, and how can we live fully alive? Donna, let's just focus on that, that exciting idea that God mm. really designed us to be that, to live, not just live, but to live with fullness, to live with true life. I think to be fully alive means to be whole. Uh, my life verse is 1 John 2, 20 and 27. And depending upon which version you read, right, there's a thing you know that no man has taught you. And this is given to you by the Holy Spirit. It's what you're here for. And I'm, I mean, I, you can see that I embrace it so much because I know that I'm here to help people be whole and fully alive. Mm -hmm. But this is not just a truth for me, it's God's word, so it's a truth for everybody. There's a thing you know that no man's taught you, was given to you by the Holy Spirit, it's what you're here for. We're here to be whole and fully alive, and that resonates with us. Now, our flesh sometimes will say, yes, but I'm getting older. Yes, mm -hmm. but I have this condition. Yes, but I'm on this prescription. It doesn't mean you're not intended to be whole mm -hmm. and fully alive. And, you know, there's, there's a, an analogy that we can all relate to. If we go back to grade school or middle school, we're at maybe our first dance, and there are some of us that were along the wall watching people dance and wanting to be in there so much. I want to dance too. I want to have fun. They're having so much fun. But we stood along the wall and there were others that danced. Didn't notice the people on the wall because they were having so much fun being fully alive. <laughs> and what I want to say to people is don't be a bystander in life. Don't stand along the wall. Dance. <laughs> Experience every single day richly, fully, and being whole. People ask me, oh, aren't you that, that lady who was that weight loss place? No, I'm in the business of building whole and fully alive people. Well, Somebody just, else will say fitness, right? You have that fitness facility. No, we're in the business of building whole and fully alive people. I was just going to say, people drive by your facility on Cable Road. They know your name well. I mean, you have been a well-known advocate for fitness and for weight loss. Mm -hmm. But uh, like you said, each one individually is not the solution looking at the whole picture and the hormonal situation, yep. all of that together is the pathway yep. to achieving all of these results. Yep. yep, to just lose weight, it's silly. I mean, truthfully, uh, you know, we've had the conversation because we're both exercise people, right? We exercise our entire life and believe in it. You can do the wrong exercises that will throw your hormones out of whack and you're working your tail off working out, wondering why you still feel lousy, why you still can't sleep, why you can't lose weight. It's because exercise alone is not enough. Weight loss and diets bleh, alone, not enough. It's about being whole. The W in whole stands for well. It's, it's learning to understand what's real hunger. What's not real hunger? A lot of times we'll say we're hungry when our tummy's growling. Tummy, gra tummy growling just means volume's missing. And the mm -hmm. reason I can prove it's not hunger is if you drink a big glass of water, it goes away. 
-hmm. So see, your tummy didn't need food. Brain cravings. If you see a, a Domino's commercial on television, oh boy, Domino's really sounds good, I'm hungry. Are you? Or is it a brain craving? Emotional reaction can actually camouflage as hunger. Boredom eating, mm -hmm. habit eating can camouflage as hunger. So those are a lot of things we teach. The H in whole is having balance, peace, mm -hmm. which is, we know, the ultimate source of that peace, right? But we need balance. None of us wants to be running between personal life and professional life. Mm -hmm. How do we be the same person all the time? Optimistic outlook is O. And knowing the way you think affects how you feel and even your weight changes everything. L is loved and loving. Relationships matter. There are people who support us. Believe it or not, there are people who sabotage us. They don't mean to. They, they'll sabotage our goal. And then there are people who are significant in helping us achieve our goal. And finally, believe it or not, the E is for economic soundness. How many of us deal with bills on the table and just start to pull our hair out going, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, shove the bills away and run over and grab the cookies or the chips. Hmm. It's not the cookie and the chips. It's the economic, lack of economic soundness. So in being whole, you know, we're teaching people how to do all these things. Now, we meet everybody where they're at. Everybody wants to lose 20 pounds in 30 days. That's why we have Fast Track. <laughs> um, but the things that start to occur in your health allow people to live a life I mean, I, I said to somebody last week, what could you do in your life if you felt really good that you're not doing right now? And that's the question when I speak, I'll ask that question. I go to churches, I go to businesses, and I teach. And, and that's a question I'll ask. What could you do that you're not doing right now if you felt great? And that could come back to a symptom, like we've talked about a lot of symptoms on this series. It could come back to your weight, you know, with some people, they can't go to an amusement park and get on the roller coaster with their kids because hmm. weight's in the way. I mean, what could you do if you were fully alive? I, I don't want anybody to miss life. And you're not just promoting a company. You're not just promoting an idea. You're promoting an experience that you personally, you, you were diagnosed. If you go back to our first segment that we aired, you can go to our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com, and see all of our past episodes. And in that first segment, you talked about how your diagnosis was death. So many things had built into your life that if major changes didn't happen, it was not looking good for you or your family because your future was not promised. But yet here you sit and you can speak from personal experience. It is worth it to do these even, things to become fully alive. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know the major changes, right? Because like I said, exercise, exercise, I believe fixed everything. Well, here's how I'd adjust it. The right kind of exercise fixes everything. But if you're doing the wrong kind that you don't even know is the wrong kind, it'll mess you up. Just like weight loss alone, a diet alone is not enough. It'll mess you up. It'll slow your metabolic rate down, actually. And mine was about health. Mine had gone so far as to go from adrenal fatigue to adrenal exhaustion to adrenal burnout. I was at the very end of burnout, which is why my body was shutting down. But again, God just makes it all work out. And if I hadn't gone through that, Jennifer, I, we wouldn't have this program. We wouldn't have locations across the nation, you know, which are founded right here in our little town in, in Ohio, across the nation now, teaching this, that people were created to be whole and fully alive, not just lose weight because of some extra weight or go to a fitness facility because they want to work out. And those two things are wonderful. Nutrition, fitness, I'm a fan. I just know that alone, they can be incomplete, especially if you're over 35. I just, I found it out. And when you go from being told the next phase is death to feeling like you've gotten your life back, <laughs> you, you gotta tell people, like you can't, you can't be quiet, you know? I mean, it's like, it's like, no, do this and don't do this. And it could be this. And it's, it's a fascinating thing when you think about the, the science behind the way God made these bodies. It's, it's all very simple. We human beings just complicate everything. Well, we certainly don't want it to be complicated for you. Hopefully that you have found some value in all of the information that's been uh, brought to you through this series, Fully Alive, <coughs> excuse me, 
Um, but this is not where it ends. This is the point where if you haven't already started the path, this is your path that you can become fully alive the way God has truly intended you to be. And Donna is serious about realizing that in her personal life, God has done some amazing changes and believes that the same thing could happen for you. Here's the information on your screen where you can get more information. Of course, you're always welcome to contact us at TV44 and we'll point you in the right direction as well. Remember, regardless of where you've been, regardless of what brought you to where you are now, there is a future for you ahead and God truly does intend for you to be fully alive the rest of your days. Donna Crutch, we thank you so much for sharing this incredible information, your life-changing story and the stories of your friends and thank you for what you do because you are you are making changes for people all across the country. Thank uh, you. Thank, thank you. I'm honored. Thank you. And back to you. Thank you, Jennifer. Now, if you've missed any of the previous parts of that series, you can watch those online. Just visit faithandfriends.wtlw. Com. Now on to our series on marriage. What are the keys to a strong marriage? How do you show support to your spouse when hobbies and interests might not be exactly the same? Well, David and Tracy Sellers of Vows to Keep.com Marriage Ministries returns to complete their discussion about becoming a champion for your spouse's causes. We actually create a, a competition for control, and it comes usually in the form of demands. Um, you have to. I, this Saturday, we're doing this. And it, it, it could look so different. Biblically, we should be really having a competition to outgive each other, mm -hmm. which is a really fun way to live. Your spouse, of course, when you reject them in this way, um, tends to look for other people that have the same interest as they do. So what we mm -hmm. see in marriages that suffer from this condition is that usually you've got someone, you've got a couple that starts out as one, and over time, they become two people living in two different worlds. Mm, definitely. It's a hard, hard place to be. If I put this in just very practical terms, for Tracy and I, she likes to go shopping. This means, for me, that I'm going to get engaged with her. I am as involved as I can be in that process. We have a lot of fun together. It's taken some time for me to get used to that, to really um, <laughs> engage probably in the most productive way, but yet we have a lot of fun. Um, for Tracy, she comes to car shows with me and, you know, she asks questions about why I like a certain kind of car or what, what about this or, you know, we have these dialogues and people see our relationship looking very different. They see us holding hands in environments and being excited about each other in environments that's not natural for them and they ask these questions, you know, why? And it gives us an opportunity to shine light in a place by answering those kind of questions. It's, it's not of me, it's of my desire to pursue God. I see you also really investing each other by doing that. You know, Tracy, mm -hmm. by asking those questions about those cars, you're you're investing in an mm -hmm. interest of yours, and you're yep. you're further connecting Definitely. with each other. I mean, it may feel like a small thing; it's a car show, a car show. But you know what? That's those are elements that mm -hmm. can bring you guys even closer, closer together. Now, let's say that it's been years since you've taken interest in in something, and all of a sudden you're just really passionate about it, and your spouse is going, "What has happened?" to this person in my home. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't understand, we've seen such a change. Mm -hmm. Well, I think being your spouse's champion becomes such a change for, you know, in those situations where, you know, they're saying, what, what has happened here? It, it becomes a, a significant antidote to a lifeless marriage. And that is the sort of thing that will really cause them to react. It might be, yeah, I've seen behavior in you, but also I think that there's a spark that's lit there that says, whoa, there's, there's actually a cause here. There's, there's an intentionality to it. We're no longer roommates, which is how a lot of marriages mm -hmm. get. Um, so it can be also an antidote to what a lot of couples suffer from in the area of just anger toward each other. There's these undercurrents that are always going. Um, when you take on someone else's cause, it, it is an attitude shift. And it's, it's something that becomes very, very visible. I think being your spouse's biggest champion, serving them, um, ultimately it, it's serving God also. And it will come back around to you. I, we have to be careful to not be motivated by how it comes back around to us. But I think it's also pretty easy to see that it does. Yeah, what we've talked about today is all about taking up someone else's cause. And it is so fulfilling in marriage when you take up God's cause yeah. together. And that's really the punchline of all that we're talking about. Because once you start taking up your spouse's cause, your eyes get off yourself and you say, what's this life really about? What's my marriage really about? And then it becomes a God-sized picture. 
we're really sinners by nature, and it becomes kind of um, just so easy to say, I want what I want, so I need resources to get it. So we kind of claim everything as our own, all the time, all the money, all the resources, because I want this thing to happen. Well, if our cause is God's cause, then that's a total game changer. I want you to listen to this verse from 1 John chapter 5. It says, this is the confidence that we have before him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So that means if we're on God's team, he's going to answer the prayers that say, Lord, I want to further your kingdom. He's going to provide those resources. I think a way to wrap this up today is whatever is his thing, make it yours. Whatever is her thing, make it yours. And of course, whatever is God's thing, make that be the point. What are your spouse's causes? How supportive are you? Let's not stop it. I don't want you to say, well, he or she's not supportive of me. No, that's, that's not go there. What can you right now reach out and be the hands and feet of Jesus with your spouse and your spouse's causes? And above all, is God's causes, are God's causes, the key for your marriage? If not, and if you're in a position where you can't sit down with your spouse and talk about these things and take it to God, you can always talk to God about it. And God's prayers are powerful and can do amazing things. Thank you so much, Dave and Tracy, for joining us again this week on Faith and Friends. Very, very important information. Um, don't forget, you can go to vows2keep.com to find out more about the Vows to Keep Marriage Ministry, and you can hear more from Dave and Tracy Sellers on WTTP and Shine FM Radio right here in Lima and Bell Fountain in the surrounding areas. I am no longer able to get out to church. TV 44 is my church on Sundays. Thank you, TV 44, for being there for me. Thanks also to those who support this TV station financially. It is a blessing. The TV44 Spring to Life campaign is underway. Partner financially with TV44 during this exciting new season. Call today or visit WTLW.com for a secure donation. Well, we are in the final days of our Spring to Life funding campaign, and this week we are pleased to report we have reached over 88% of our goal. Actually, we're getting closer to the 90% of our goal and we are almost mm. there. Special thanks to a few of our recent partners who have just joined us in the last couple weeks. I want to thank Kent and Kim in Middle Point and Joyce, Joyce Meyer and WOSN, the online sports scores. And also want to thank the Pugsleys in Finley for your donation. I want to thank David in Crydersville, Robert in Lima, Larry and Marion also in Lima, and Don from Paulding. Our campaign continues through this month uh, through this coming Sunday actually Mother's Day so you can make your tax deductible donation online anytime at WTLW.com or you can call 419-339-4444 you can stop by in person or you can mail your gift to 1844 Beatty Road Lima Ohio 45807 you also can set up an automatic monthly withdrawal from your checking or savings or even a, a credit card account uh, we want to thank you for your donations your prayers and certainly for your partnership we're also taking auction donations this is one of those auction donations. This beautiful marble top coffee table could be yours. At this year's auction, it has been donated to us. One of several beautiful items from Lynn Lehman. And that's really very nice. We were commenting how it makes the rest of our furniture look not quite so beautiful. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I wasn't commenting on that. Well, how, how it's a beautiful nice piece a, on its own. A pie on top would be very nice. A pie on top. Wafting. Or a six foot seven cake. Yeah, for the nice. third year in a row. Someday we will get that cake. The six foot seven cake. Yes. <laughs> but right now we're looking for a final look at our verse before we leave you for today. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make, your, make straight your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment. To your bones. We pray refreshment for your bones this week and we pray it begins with each day waking up on your knees before God and then doing something like we learned from Jay today. 103 years old maybe that could be we'll be doing a story on you next when you turn 103. <laughs> Have a good week everyone.